Hey guys, one of the very interesting psychology experiments that I am very fond of in Magic the Gathering is how people who were maybe bullied or picked on or not popular um, become popular in Magic and then how they, do they react? Did they use their power for good? Like Noah Bradley, does he teach young female artists um, how to protect themselves from predators? Or Rachel Bradley, does he defend them? Does he defend her co-workers uh, co and her peers? And Conley Woods, uh, Owen Turnwald, Frank, uh, the list can go on until infinity. Yuya Watanabe, Alex, uh, Jared Bocelli, Mark Helles Carvijo. I mean, it could go on and on. How do these magic celebrities use their power, their clout, if you will. So clout, I'm just going to put my own definition on it. It's kind of like being able to influence someone to do something or, hey, you know, Noah is such a great artist and he has so many followers. Therefore, if he preys on me, I shouldn't tell anyone because I'm afraid or I'll tell his wife who then pretends that it didn't happen. So here we have LSV who has forgotten that he has a young daughter and previously a wife. Uh, Gabby has also forgotten that she has a husband that made Gabby famous. Um, I read the biography. I read both their biographies in a uh, separate video and now it makes sense why she kept Sparts. So that's not her maiden name and that obviously is not LSV's last name. Uh, Louis Scott Vargas. Uh, Sparts is actually the name of her husband who did create a, I guess, a tinier version of BuzzFeed is how I would put it. So BuzzFeed creates viral content. Uh, this DOS company used to be called Sparts Media, basically just reposts the viral content as their own, according to Wikipedia. So for a lowly, lowly Jeremy, the Missouri MTG, a backpack salesman, to dare contest the godhood that is LSV. I think this is the best way to say it. He signed up to be roasted, not murdered. <laughs> but um, as you know, I've researched and done a little bit more investigation. So the first time I have learned about this was from Unsleeve Media, a Anella Jeremy. And he also told us about Evan, Mr. Orange, who was working at Star City Games. He was Star City Games at the time. And then suddenly he had to leave and we wonder why he left. Well, I mean, it's out there in the internet, so you can find that out on your own. I'm only going to talk about why pro magic players have so little respect for amateur magic players or casual magic players. Um, it's because they think we're idiots. They think we are idiots. Let me repeat that again, a third time. They think we are idiots because they expect to get roasted, they get roasted and they get offended that they got roasted. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not like this is something that you can forget. You change your daughter's life. Now, maybe there was relationship problems. Maybe there was problems on both sides. And this was like the power magic couple. The last time there was a power magic couple, it was Frank and Melissa. And Frank created a auto texting device, which texted every female he met at GP. No matter the age. I mean, at some point in time, you just have to, if you're a non-magic player and you're looking in and all the celebrities, all the greatest content creators, and you know, and this, this is something I, I give Tolarian Community uh, College all the credit. He's an upstanding person. No matter how much I trust him, no matter how much I talk about him, I cannot take from the, I cannot take away from the fact that he's an outstanding family dad. He has kids, he has a wife that didn't change who he was. He didn't immediately go off to the next most attractive female he could find, which absolutely he could have if he wanted to. In Magic the Gathering, I mean, look at, I mean, I know we can't talk about looks and things of that nature, but I, honestly, Tolarian Community College 
from my perspective as a straight male, is better looking than LSV. Definitely better looking than Frank. If you guys looked what Frank looks like, or any of these weds, weds, like he easily could have got a Gabby Sparks or someone similar. Maybe even more popular based on that fact that he's more popular than LSV in the casual community. But he didn't. And good on him. Or, you know, Rudy. Rudy could do something like this. Um, but he doesn't. Because, again, I'm not going to get into too much. But, like, when you're saying that, hey, roast me as a magic celebrity, they're going to roast you and you behaved unethically. At the very least, it's unethical, right? And now I know what you guys are saying. Oh, we should always leave the young daughters alone, blah, 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 blah. Divorce, divorce, divorce. But the way that it went about was the unethical part, of, in my opinion. Um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Fine. But there was a period of time, 2015 to 2017, where Gabby was still married to this individual. And she had left the Gabby Sparks company, or the Sparks company. And there was a lot of rumors and a lot of things going around. And when there's smoke, there often is fire. I think it is hilarious. I think it is just so funny that they would think they're better than us when we actually pay. So these people, I can categorize Magic players in two groups. People who get paid, like Autumn would get paid. She doesn't spend money on, non-binary does not spend money on Magic cards. Autumn would be paid by Wizard of Coast to play this game. Um, Gabby would be paid. Uh, LSV would be paid. All, what, you, what we, the plebs, don't understand fully is that we are the game. These content creators who are largely paid by Wizard of Coast, again, more props to Tolarian Community College. I mean, he is different from them, okay? He's not being paid directly by Wizard of Coast or employed in some capacity. When you talk about um, LSV, EFRO, getting people banned, expecting them to bow down to him and concede games to him just because he's famous, supposedly famous, um, EFRO's wife who wants you to meme so she can ban you for life in Magic the Gathering, it is very, very bad that we have this type of behavior in our small community. Because everyone with any type of ego is behaving in this exact identical way. So you know what I'm talking about. You know the guy at FNM with his earphones who doesn't talk to anyone. This was before COVID-19, of course. I'm talking about these individuals. You know the guy who gets angry and throws his deck at you. You know the guy who is like super offended by everything you say. You know these people. Because they exist in your FNM. They exist at your pre-release. You know the guy who sits, he's your backpack trader. You know the Jeremy. He comes to the pre-release, he doesn't pay money, he doesn't spend any money, he's very thrifty, very frugal. He doesn't give anything back to the game store ever. And he's there trying to scalp and trade and trade bait you know, the players, the casual players to get a good deal. Basically trying to scam them. So we know all these people exist on a microcosm, but when you talk about the larger picture right of magic the guy not at your fnm so we move from fnm to a gp format or to an online format which is much larger than the gp then you still have these individuals but they're just more brazen they're just more brazen um and i think jeremy is absolutely right um to call him out and LSV does think he is famous. LSV is also now a very valuable consultant for a popular digital card game. That's why he treats us like crap, guys. I've heard stories of how kind he is. But you know who was the nicest guy? Alex Pacini. If you ask anyone, he was the nicest human being ever. No, I'm serious. Ask anyone. But also, he was the biggest cheater. So you understand what I'm saying? is if people are not real with you, it's because they want something from you. And if you are a young female artist, Noah Bradley wants something from you. You understand? So in life, 
when someone is too nice or too friendly or too, you know, like outstanding of an individual, like the Canadian Prime Minister was presented, then you go look at his uh, pictures when he was a school teacher and you're like, whoa, this guy really, really enjoys blackface. Like, every picture, every time there's a Halloween party with, like, young children, he's in blackface. <laughs> it's like, whoa, <laughs> did no one tell him the first time around that this was not cool, right? And then there's some unethical behaviors that's currently going on right now. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.